you know, it is very important to publish. Dr. Simsioka in the morning talked to us about this and how publication and the journal and all that is getting better and being more uh, um, inclusive from other parts of the world. Because the majority of the papers, the majority of the science come from third uh, uh, world countries. So we want to fix it. As you can see here on this graph, um, it has been published uh, uh, more papers in the last 10 years than it has been previously in the last 100 years. And this is because many things, internet, interaction, people um, need to uh, publish the stuff. Remember, if it's not published, it never happened. So if you're a great surgeon, but you never publish your results, it will forget on time. No one will know. Um, here on this slide, um, the majority, like I said, the majority of the publications come from uh, North America, Canada, United States, uh, Europe, and Australia. Um, so there has been this crisis, uh, uh, physician and scientist crisis, balancing clinical research that is not published enough. Um, there is a tremendous disparity in scientific productivity among nations, uh, particularly in Latin America. So, uh, for that being said, I'm going to introduce Dr. Pavel, who came up with a really nice idea of how to improve that. And please. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, it's truly an honor to be here presenting at TNS Summer Meeting 2024. Um, my name is Pavel Rojas, and I'm really excited. So the present initiative aimed to address this research disparity in Mexico, uh, like as a starting model. Um, I was born and raised in Tijuana, Mexico. Uh, Tijuana is also the most crossed international uh, border in the world with a lot of cultural diversity. It is also like the border city with San Diego, and it's, um, that's where I was, uh, I was born and raised. And as you can see on the lower picture, uh, that's my medical school. And as you can imagine, even though we had like an amazing professor, we were teaching us uh, everything they could about medicine, and it was amazing, but uh, as you can imagine, it was really difficult to, to navigate through the process if you wanted to, do, to pursue an academic career, if you wanted to pursue research, if you wanted to, to get any, uh, any pathway towards becoming like an academic scientist, it was extremely hard. So um, what's always been really interesting to me is, um, you know, Tijuana is a really bicultural uh, a culture. So I remember that uh, when I was, I was growing up, my brother that's uh, sitting over here, uh, when we were growing up, it was really common that for Christmas or, or something we, we, would, we would used to cross the board with my mother and then, and then get some uh, like gifts for the family. And as I was growing old and, and I got into medical school, it remained the same thing. But now it was for academic purposes. So it's always been really incre like incredible to me was that uh, when I was studying medicine, one of my favorite spots to study was the Geisel Library at UCSD. It was amazing because uh, I, I, I used to uh, like either drive or, or grab the trolley and then would eventually go to study there. And it was amazing how like the, the gigantic research building, it, like uh, how how really um, kind of the people over there were. Like it, it was like uh, like a completely different world. Yet it, it, it was like so close yet so far away from from my hometown, right? So um, even though I thought it was going to be extremely challenging to to have this in, in Mexico. Um, I always had like big, big mentors that uh, I, I looked up to. I remember that uh, when I was studying like in medicine, um, it was really cool because you, you heard the stories about Alfredo Quinones Hinojosa who was born in Mexicali and you know my mother is also from Mexicali. We have a couple of students over here from Mexicali as well. And uh, Dr. Esquenazo was from Mexico. Leonardo Michael Castilla that's also from a public school in, in San Luis Potosí. So I mean, I cannot even explain to you how, how inspiring you, I, I, probably if you guys don't know like the, the total extent you, you have uh, you opened up the way for a lot of generations and and I truly believe that everything started because of great initiatives like uh, Dr. Cayo Rosu with uh, with the World Championships program that I'm, I'm also really excited to be collaborating uh, Dr. Concioca that was that's um, you know one of my, my best friends mentors that Fernando and he's over there so I mean it's been, it's been amazing and so research in, in fact like really changed my life um, I, I mean my boss over here Dr. Scanasi I don't believe he completely understands how much he changed my life. Not, not only my life, but also my, my wife and my whole like generational uh, things that were to come. So it's been an amazing journey so far. I mean, uh, you know, coming here to the States and being able to experience all these amazing, you know, regardless of the awards and being able to talk with you guys, 
It's been amazing so far. And uh, I aim to be the last generation of medical students in Mexico who face similar research barriers. So I, I published recently this paper uh, called An Online Model for Neurosurgical Research in Developing Countries. Uh, this was mainly started in Mexico, but I truly believe it could be replicated in other uh, similar countries facing similar challenges. So basically, um, the way it works is I basically, when I was uh, like one year, uh, like in January 2023, I started to gather like 22 students who were extremely dedicated. Most of them are sitting with us as we speak. And uh, they, they, were, they were like, uh, I remember I used to work like from Monday to Friday and then the weekends I, we used to like uh, gather along and get these really cool lectures. It was, it was about statistics, writing an article, and eventually, like after this three month program, they became somewhat of a, like an expert-ish or a tutor, you know, compared to the, their starting point. And then eventually we spread the word about this thing and then now it impacted over 811 uh, people that at least finished two modules of, of this uh, research training program. So eventually, once we, we finish with this, pro with this project, we pair them up with a, with a professional over here in the United States or in Mexico that, could, that was uh, like an expert in, in research. And eventually, we submitted to a bunch of uh, like really relevant conferences and meetings. So like just for starters, I'm really excited because many of the students over that are sitting with us uh, successfully sub got submitted and accepted over 40 after from Mexico and Latin America, something that it was never been done before. And, and it's something that I believe it deserves like a, a lot of recognition. So this initiative in a single year produced 11 articles and over 50 abstracts. And even though it doesn't sound like much, just remember that most of these were students like in their first or second year of medical schools. They had no idea about what a chi-square was, how to write it, and most of them were still learning English as, as, as we were speaking. So, and, and most of these articles were published in high impact journals so, such as Neurosurgery, Journal of Oncology, and even JNS. And you know, even um, I, I was really excited because uh, Dr. Sheehan and Dr. Uh, Raniti Amico invited um, one of these projects to, to the tumor talk that was, uh, they received a lot of attention by the Seattle Science Foundation. So, we also uh, performed like a bibliometric analysis like before and after this initiative. And basically, uh, you know, Mexico still in a, a developing country, so it's still growing in terms of research. But this last, last from January to today, 205 articles were published by Mexico. And even though it's, I mean, it's, it's still growing, right? So out of these 205, 3.4 were uh, a contribution by this initiative, which was a significant addition in comparison to previous years. So even though, um, you know, we, can, we cannot say, you know, it, it was like principle proven that one was a causation of the other, there, like 3.4% 3 was still part of this thing. So, I mean, uh, with this, I just wanna say that this model can reduce research disparities and enhance scientific contributions in developing countries. So um, I truly believe that, I, I mean, uh, a lot of, of the students are over here with us. I truly believe that they, they truly have worked really hard. So I would truly appreciate it if we could give like a round of applause to all of them because they've done amazing work. So far. <laughs> Primarily benefited in Mexico, I believe it could be implemented in other similar developing countries uh, facing similar challenges. Over here, what you're seeing is a heat map of how, like, where the attention has been gathered. And as you can see, even though most of our, our, of our, of our uh, uh, population of students is from Mexico, we have only over 33 uh, countries that are Spanish speaking or with Hispanic background that benefited from this program. But you, you see, there's even like some people like that speak Spanish, like in Russia, or like there's one in Denmark. I don't know what he's doing over there. But, uh, but I mean, there is some interest, and you know, thanks to social media and all these amazing like net, uh, internet platforms, it's possible to to, to try to net, enhance this productivity. So, with similar initiatives, I believe that we can enhance medical education in developing countries. And I truly want to thank from the bottom of my heart, like, like this was the first cohort of, of students from Mexico. Uh, it's Diego. He's not like here with us right now. I don't know, like, and also couldn't come. And I believe he's sitting over here. Yeah, he's over there. So, <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm really excited. I, I hope, I truly believe that, you know, I, we, we intend to keep working with this. And I truly want to acknowledge my, my mentors, Dr. Eskenaz and Dr. Rahim, who have been extremely supportive, like, from the very start of this. So, uh, I mean, I, I also want to thank my, the wonderful members from the lab, who I consider an extended part of my family. And, and you know, my wife, Jenny, who's uh, recording as we speak. And who's been, she's been really extremely supportive. My brother over there, who's, uh, you know, who's been here for a while. And uh, well, thank you so much. And uh, I, I truly, it's truly a dream come true to be able to speak with us. Yeah, thank you.